Welcome back. Today we're going to do a quick overview of the Unraid dashboard. Let's jump in. First thing we're going to do is go over to the dashboard tab. Up in the left corner, you'll find information about your server. The name, the model, the registration, which OS version you have, how long it's been up, the restart button, and the stop button. The image here, you can change to whatever fits your machine. If you click edit, you can just select whichever one matches yours, and there you go. Below that, you have the motherboard that's in your system. Below the motherboard, you have the processor. It shows you the overall load, each individual core's load, and then the little graph at the bottom here shows you the same information. Below that we have system, which shows the available resources and the utilization of those resources. Below that we have interfaces, which is the network interfaces. Back to the top, the Docker containers would be listed here. Any virtual machines you have would be in this area. All of the shares that you have created on the system are displayed here. The users, they would all be displayed right here. Right now we just have root. In the top right, we have parity, which shows you the status of the parity drive. In this case, it is valid. If it's rebuilding or something of that nature, it would be displayed right there. Below that we have array, which shows you the status of your current array. The parity drive in this case, and then two additional disks. Over here it shows you the health of the drives, the temperature of the drives, and whether or not they're active. Below that we have the cache drive, which shows the same information, but just for the cache drive itself. Below that we have unassigned, which is all the unassigned disks within the system. Going over to main now. Under Array Devices, it shows you the parity drive and the drives that you have assigned to that array. It shows you their temperature, their reads, their writes, any errors that may be on there, the file system, the size of those drives, the used and free space available. Below that, we have Pool Devices, which for me is the cache drive pool and shows the same information as the array drives. Below that, we have the Boot Device, which is the same information just for the flash drive itself. Below that we have unassigned devices, which are other drives that may be in your system, but not yet utilized as part of the array. Scrolling down, for the array operations we have stop, check, history, spin up, spin down, clear stats, move, reboot, and shutdown. They should be pretty self-explanatory really. Going up to shares, shares will list all of the shares that are built within your system. Users. The default root account is here. If you'd like to add a new user, you can click add user, type in the user's name. We will call this user Bob. Give him a description of Bob Smith. You can choose an image for Bob if you'd like. You can set a password for Bob. We'll make it real tough. It's Bob and we will click add and then click done. There you go. Bob has an account now. To remove Bob from your list of users, simply click on Bob, put a check mark in the delete box and then press delete. And there you go, Bob has been removed. Click done. On to settings. Within settings, there's probably not much you'll change here, but there are a few things you should know about. CPU pinning is used to isolate certain cores of your processor to certain processes, or to stop the host OS from actually using those. For pinning VMs, you'd select them up here. For pinning to dockers, you'd do them here. And to isolate CPUs from being used by the host, you'd select them here. Back to settings. Under date and time, you can set the time zone that you're in, and I am not in Pacific, I am in Eastern, so I will just change that now. Hit apply, and that's all set. Head back to settings. All right, next we're gonna jump down to display settings. Within there, there's several different things you can change. The ones that I'm concerned about are temperature. I'm gonna change that to Fahrenheit so that I can understand what the temperature is. And then under Dynamics color theme, I'm a big fan of a darker layout, so I'm changing mine to black. The other thing that you'll probably run across seeing different people out there, they will have a banner across the top. By that, I mean up here in this top section of the dashboard. That is selected down here. Very last option says show banner. You drop down, select yes. This is the default banner. You hit apply and there you go. Dark theme with a nice little banner up there. And that is customizable. You can put your own banners up there. All right, from there, press done. Next, we're going to go to notification settings, which will allow your system to notify you if there's any updates. To do that, click on Unraid OS Update Notification, drop down, and select whatever frequency you would like. I'm fine with once a day. Plugins and Docker update notifications, I also have those set for once a day. Scroll down, press Apply, and you're all set. One additional note on that. If you scroll down a little further, you've got the ability to set up an email notification and lots of other services like Discord. Just fill out that information with your details and it'll notify you on those platforms. Once done there, press done. 
Next, we're going to go to Scheduler. That schedules different actions to occur on your server. Under Parity, you can drop down and select Weekly. This allows you to schedule when the Parity check is going to happen. After Weekly has been selected, you can choose a date and time that you would like that action to run. When you're happy with your settings, go ahead and hit Apply. Go ahead and scroll down. Under Mover Settings, this is the schedule on which the mover will run, in this case daily at 3.40 a.m., which is fine for me. Down below, the trim settings. If you have a solid state drive in your system, then you would want to turn on the trim here. So I am going to select daily and then hit apply. All right, back to the top on plugins. These are the different plugins that are installed within your system. Over on the right side, you've got check for updates. If you want to force a manual check, you just click that. Status will show you the current status of your plugins, if they're up to date or not. Next, let's jump over to Docker. I have no Docker set up currently, but all the commands for them are down here. You can check the container size, you can update all of them, you can check for updates, resume them all, pause them all, stop them all, start them all, or add containers. We'll get into these more later on. Go up to VMs. If you have VMs in your system, you control them here. You can add a VM, start all of them, stop all of them. Clicking over to the Apps tab, this is the Community Application Store, and there's a tremendous amount of plugins and dockers in here. In the top left, you can search for items. Next, let's jump over to Tools. There's not much you really gonna need in here. A lot of it's diagnostics and hardware related stuff, but a couple of different things you might wanna know about. The new config, if for some reason you need to wipe out all your drives and start all over, this is where you'd do it. In order for it to work though, the array needs to be stopped. We're not gonna worry about that right now. Let's cover two more things under Tools. Go back to Tools. In the bottom area, you have Registration, which allows you to check the registration of your server and also to purchase an upgrade to your server. And lastly, Update OS. This allows you to go in here and check for updates to the Unraid system. To do that, you click on Check for Updates in the top right corner. There you go. There's a quick tour of Unraid. We'll see you in the next one.